Hello and welcome to the Critic Eculus. I'm the Monk, and today we are in Crusader Kings 3. And we're picking up from where we left off in our Beginner's Guide um, series that we've literally just started. We are playing as Kong. We are in episode 3, and if this is the first time you're seeing this playthrough, maybe think about heading back to episode 1 because you've missed a little bit. And like I said before, this is a Beginner's Guide, so... I tend to try and explain my actions a little bit. It does mean the episodes are a little bit slower, perhaps. Um, but if I do end up glossing over something a little bit too quickly that you want to know more of in more detail, pop it down in the comments, guys. You know, I don't mind making sure that I cover that in the next episode uh, that I happen to record. Now, in the last episode, we actually done okay. We create ourselves a duchy. We had another vessel come in, which is pretty cool. It does seem like I make one mistake per episode, though. So I guess we'll see if that continues, if we do continue to make those mistakes or not, and just how badly that will cost us. Um, I think we're in a pretty good position at the moment. I would like to still continue to expand our our growing kingdom, hopefully actually becoming a kingdom in the near future as well. We are currently 40 years old. This playthrough plans to stretch on um, through, through my life, maybe even my son's life, maybe even their son's life as well, just depending on how well this series actually does. So if you are interested in Crusader Kings content, I will be covering it extensively in the future. So make sure you, you hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, comment your thoughts, and possibly even join the Discord as we do have an active and growing Discord where we like to discuss anything that we happen to be stuck on. But anyway, enough talking. Let's actually get into the episode. Now, as with this is a fresh load, I do quite like to hit the hints just to see like what it is we're actually doing. As you can see, we have low control in a few different counties. We could possibly look at that, uh, look to strengthening that control with our council. We can go to our marshal and go down to increase control. Of course, I'm pretty sure we are actually playing. Yes, we're actually playing the martial lifestyle. So when we do start getting a few more points, what we could look at doing is getting Serve the Crown. Uh, that gives us control growth of 0 0.3 a month. I think if you happen to be happen to be running a playthrough where you're you're doing a lot of conquering, you're taking over a lot of land, control is something that can kind of quite easily slip by. So a single point in Serve the Crown can be extremely useful. Um, after that, of course, you could always go for strict organization and then go all the way down to absolute control, which is very good. And it means you're probably not going to be having any problems from anybody. So when we do get a new Marshall point, we'd have to have a look about where we actually put that point. Because although I wouldn't mind getting Peacemaker, I don't know if I necessarily need it right now in this lifetime. So... Going over to serve the crown may be the right way to go. Anyway, let's look back at those hints. Um, we have got some wars that we didn't, can declare. We're not in, we're not in debt, so we don't have to worry about you know not being in debt. We do have a second duchy that we can create. That's potentially a problem when it comes to us dying. Hopefully, we don't die anytime soon. We do have some prisoners to ransom, which is always good for always good for a little bit of money, even if it is only 10. And now let's have a look at our decisions as well. We are minus 200 prestige, so we do need to do need to pop that up relatively soon. Let's have a look to see if we have any. We have eight children, which is a huge amount of children. The son that we kind of have going right now, he is our player heir. He is a dwarf. I think it could be quite funny uh, taking over his character. I would potentially um, look at killing him off, to be fair, if you don't want, because dwarfism is an inheritable trait, if you don't want that to kind of, you know, continue through your loins, then perhaps think about 
killing them off. And it's something like I would look at doing. However, he's a dwarf. He's sadistic. I think he's he's got a really good learning. He's kind of like a mini Tyrion, I feel. Um, maybe more from the books than the actual TV show. He's also impatient and arrogant. I, I, I think I would enjoy a playthrough as him. I guess it depends on how long we actually live. Um, so, yeah, we're, we'll see about what we do there. Interesting, though, potentially. Let's look at who else we've got as heirs. We do have another son who isn't married, isn't betrothed. So let's see if we can find ourselves some more alliance power, possibly. There we go. Look at that. We got ourselves a nice little extra alliance there. So let's have that go. And we have, okay, we've got a betrothal there already. Uh, already betrothed. I think that's one that we actually wed off. We don't actually get anything from that one. But one of our children did actually inherit genius, which is kind of awesome, to be fair. Um, any child that has genius is very good to have around, stick around, maybe even, you know, be able to use later down the line. Getting genius into, into your family, into your dynasty. Good, good, good idea. How old is he? He is six, so we're kind of looking for someone around the same age. We actually have this one right here who has an inheritable trait as well. Um, so this could be very interesting. They're also superior, meaning that we've got a very good, decent ally there. We may already be allied, however. Hard to keep up sometimes with all the different allies that we pick up, especially if we're playing... Playing a character that has multiple options for uh, spouses, you know, lots of areas for children to pop out. Again, we are looking for alliance power. I think most of these we have actually got with alliance power, though, or alliance. We have another little alliance, though, 200. I think all the little alliances really add up. It's really important to build a strong alliance. It's also very important to remember that after this life, if we die, someone else takes over, um, all of our alliances go. So really surviving the first life, surviving the second life, it can be difficult. It really can. And it's definitely something to watch out for. Definitely something to watch out for. It's it's one of those ones that can be very difficult to, to maintain your run if you don't manage it correctly. I think we're going to leave everyone else there so we can look for brand new alliances a little bit later if necessary. Also remember that when it comes to alliances, let's say I made an alliance with these guys right here. Um, if I made an alliance with this king and, for instance he dies that's it my alliance is over you know so keep an eye on that alliances can very quickly very easily break down uh, so anyway we need to look for someone else to attack possibly now loba i know they're very strong so i'd like to probably avoid them for right this second i'm looking for a nice easy one again um i would prefer not having to call in allies as that's not something i can do right now anyway we do have 600 troops, so it isn't a lot. I may need to just hit fast forward and just have uh, my levies kind of regroup. I say that, but I found a nice easy target. I say a nice easy target. There are issues. What is this costing me? It's costing me prestige. Um, we don't have enough prestige to actually do this. And we'll get a fame penalty if we do. However... Oh, it's I'm I'm tempted. I'm definitely tempted. Fame to me right now isn't necessarily a, a priority, so I think I'm gonna do it. I think we're gonna do it. We shouldn't do it, but I'm gonna do it because I want to extend my land. Um, so what we're gonna do? I'm actually going to move the rally points, and I'm gonna have it down here so we don't have to march as far. 
And let's raise the troops. Everyone's raised, and there we go. We have got a betrothal done and dusted. And there's his troops. There's his two, 223 troops. And if we look at the battle, we can see that that is what he's got. We have 649. He has 223. Um, he hasn't called in any allies, as it says zero right there. It's something to consider. Also, another thing to consider when looking at your at your potential targets is how much gold they have. Now, he only has 104 gold. Therefore, he can't really afford to hire any mercenaries. So we don't, you know, we don't have to expect more troops to be coming in. But if we went up against a king and that king had a lot of troops, sorry, a lot of gold, then you can expect that just because his troops may be low, doesn't mean that more troops aren't coming if you can afford those mercenaries. We've been called in, called to war, called to war. Now, again, remember, we don't actually have to accept. Um, even if we do accept, we don't have to help them. It depends how long the war goes on. It depends kind of what the outcome potentially is to that. You would really prefer allies that don't necessarily need the help, but... Sometimes it can't be avoided. I think having a strong alliance is better than having no alliance at all. There we go. We are in battle. As you can see, when it comes to this battle, we have seven champions currently to their fives. And if you remember in the last episode, we actually boosted up our champions, our knights. Um, therefore, we're going to be rather strong. We do both have the same kind of regiment layout as well, in a sense that we're both rocking archers. Now, it wasn't a nice, easy win by any means. However, we did get the win, so that counts for us. Happy days. Uh, numbers for us got a little bit low. Um, a lot of that could probably be because we may be leading this battle. If we are, we don't necessarily have a particularly high martial skill, stat, or prowess. Um, we do have quite a weak character, so looking at who's leading our army is probably something we should do for... The next battle we go in because we very almost lost that and we really shouldn't have there we go one of our sons have come of age which is quite cool oh he has a secret lover that's very interesting despite the settlement of kong north yielding to his armies has spread into the habits of greater Kong fervor. Instead, he seems intent on... Inc okay. So, that's fine. He's got more prestige to get. Well, he's taken my prestige. Anyway, I'm pretty low on prestige, which isn't cool. But we did just win this war very, very quickly, um, which is good. We extended what we had, so I'm happy about that. We are being raided, so I'm not necessarily happy about that. And I believe these are the guys that do outnumber us. Don't really want to fight them head-to-head, -head, especially considering what just happened in that last battle. And we do have another ransom. We get 25 gold for that, so we can keep that going. And what we kind of need to do now is allow our prestige to go up. I'm going to ask them to keep up the good work. Sometimes they don't know best. Um, we did just get ourselves a martial point. So I think it's probably best to pop that in Serve the Crown. I think that the 0 0.3 plus control a month is going to do us good. As we do have a few, few spots now that kind of need a little bit more control. Oh, hello. You flatter me, my lady. And... She will attempt to win my heart. Okay, we'll we, we go for that. We'll go for allowing you to win my heart. Okay, so let's have a look at our, our 
council. We have a couple of areas we definitely need to improve. Oh, okay. The enemy of Rome. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was amazed to learn at the exploits of Hannibal. Known as the enemy of Rome, Hannibal's crowning achievement was the battle. That was a really good battle. Actually, that's a very good read uh, if you guys don't actually know about it. I have the option to get a couple of different traits right now. So I can have aggressive attacker. I can have... Okay, that is a pretty good um, strategic or flexible leader. Now, I quite like flexible leader and I quite like ruthless... So, uh, sorry, uh, aggressive attackers. So I think I'm going to have that. Or oh, say that he was a fool. No, 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 no. He was not a fool. Let's go. Let's go. I will annihilate my enemies. Let's do that. I think that works out well. Anyway, we are trying to find ourselves. Someone to help us here. We also need a chancellor. Who could be a good chancellor for us? The marshal, no, we kind of need the marshal to be where he is, to be fair. So let's go up here. He's our champion anyway, so that works out. Our council's looking a little bit better, which is cool. However, I did just notice this guy doesn't even like me. So let's try and sway them because the last thing I want is an unhappy um, court or an unhappy council. We have three prisoners. Any of them any good? No money. No, not for us today. We do, however, have a couple of factions popped up. Now, the last time we looked at factions, um, there was nothing there. There was nothing to be had. Now we've got two factions popping up, so it can it can really change. However, none of our vassals are causing the issue so so far so good uh, with that there's nothing we can really do we need to increase control we already know that um, and it's something we're already working on so i think calling forward a hunt could be cool it only costs us 33 and we get to lose some stress as well not that we are very stressed but again that's something i always like to bang on about so let's sound the horn and go on a hunt Oh, okay, so this is my player and heir. He will gain a trait wounded, which isn't something we necessarily want. I will tend to him. Uh, there's no time, and I will just get the track. He won't like me, and he'll still get wounded. Hmm, this will increase stress, but we will have practiced field sur surgery for 10 years. However, we really need prestige. So we've got, so we've got, you know, we could either potentially get a half decent trait, um, or we could get a prestige at the cost of our player air not particularly liking us very much for a while. He's going to be wounded regardless of what happens. So yeah, I think we're just going to grab the prestige. And it is what it is. It looks like our allies also won that war without us, so that's pretty cool. And we got another 150 prestige for the for the hunt ending, which so that hunt worked out very, very well for us. Let's I'm gonna pause the game real quick and have a little look at this. So it looks like we should win this, but I don't like seeing so many troops um, moving through my border. So I need to keep an eye on that. We can designate a guardian. Again, it really shouldn't be me. So we're going to go for my wife. I don't want to create a duchy. But what I do want to do is potentially go for a feast. We're going to host a feast. This only costs us 50 quid. We do have the funds. Um, and this is another really, really good way of earning prestige. 
So yeah, that's what we do. We need lots of prestige. A bad reaction to the food. Uh, you grow closer to forming a rivalry. I don't really want a rivalry. Um, you get a weak, a weak hook. That could work. Um, so we get a weak hook, and we also get some prestige, which is which is what we're after. That's the whole point. And there we go. We also get some more prestige, and. We also gain uh, five opinions, so that's pretty cool. So it worked out pretty well, this feast. And we got 150 prestige at the end as well, and everyone that attended also has a 20 opinion buff on us too. So all in all, that was a really good um, feast. We got back up to positive prestige, and we are also not in debt, meaning we can look to attack somebody else. This is an interesting one because it looks like we should be able to win this. Um, we have claims as well, which is interesting. One of our vassals has claims, so we could go go there. That would be that tiny little spot there. Where else have they got? Let's see what this can actually turn into. This is a potential. He has one ally, so these troops aren't necessarily his. What are our claims? Our claims are bigger. I like our claims. Um, I think we're going to have to call in allies, however. Let's go to... Well, let's move the rally point. We'll move it down here. Like I always say, I prefer, I prefer to already know that I've won the battle before the battle even begins. Now, we do have 1,200 when it comes to... Um, our army, which means our levies are relatively back up, which is cool. Um, we can't really extend that with amount of arms. We don't have enough money. It would take a little bit of time to do that. We do, however, have prestige enough to call in allies. So I think that potentially this is a good winnable battle. And it's going in, in the direction that I kind of want as well. So let's go for my claims. And we're actually going to try this. Try this battle. That is not the one. Let's look at the one it is. There it is. There it is. So right now he hasn't actually called in allies. Uh, so there's only 480 troops potentially on the board. So we outnumber him three to one. Let's go to raise our troops real quick. He hasn't even raised his just yet, which is, again, rather interesting. Who is the commander? Select commander. So apparently at the moment, I think with the recent... I think with the recent perks we have got, we're actually the better commander. Um, I don't think we was the commander. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to, we are going to lead this battle personally. And see if that kind of helps us win this battle relatively quickly. So we've got seven months to take over this. Probably taking over the capital is a good idea, but I don't think it's going to be enough to straight out win this war. I think it's going to take a little bit more. Uh, is it love? Okay, so I am yours now and forever. You might become my soulmate and gain 30 opinion of, opinion of me. Having a soulmate is really good because it's really good for stress relief uh, and for more children. Uh, we'll not become a soulmate, but we still get them liking, and it ends it. So yeah, I think we're going to have the soulmate. We'll say yes. Yes to the soulmate. We've been asked to call for war again. Again, we're going to accept that. We've been quite lucky so far. No one's really asked us to actually help them. And yeah, so it wasn't enough, as you can see, um, to win that outright. 
It looks like he has now got an ally. Um, however, the allies only supplied him possibly 150 troops. So we're still winning this troop wise and numbers wise. And there's his troops that he's raised. I think that's actually his troops. So there should be another 100 knocking about somewhere. So remember we are on times five. That's always a little bit risky. We just had another son. We've got so many children. It looks like our ally lost that war as well. And let's see how... So we're really close. We do need to take over. We even need to go for the win, as in taking them on. Or we need to go for taking on another castle. The way the last war went, I feel like it's 50-50. But we're going to try it. We're going to try it. Because even though we had double the troops last time, we still very, very almost lost. Okay, so he's run off. We're just going to capture this. we got six months. See what he does. We should capture this before he captures any land. Therefore, hopefully, that will tip us over the edge. Um, after the army set up camp, you hear a commotion coming from the champion's lodgings. Investigating a disturbance, you find the two in the middle of a heated argument while several onlookers... Okay. So you can deliver a speech to unite the crowd. Uh, you have a 50% chance of that working by the looks of it. You could either get prestige or we could lose prestige 50%. I don't like those odds at all. Um, you can whip them. That sounds quite cool. You get some dread. You also get martial um, life experience. Both of them become wounded. This guy already doesn't like me. So there could be issues there. Uh, sod this set. I go to my tent. Hmm. What to do? What to do? You can see that he already doesn't have. He's my blood. What's his opinion of me? Plus 62. Plus 100. Okay, fine. Let's make them wounded. Even that. No, that's my player air again. That's probably not the smartest play. Um. But we'll see. It adds to his character. Adds to his character. Okay, mercenaries would cost less if we go down this route. A man's home. Uh, control territory defender. We get more advantage when fighting at home. That could be a good idea, to be fair. You get more power when it comes to... Uh, that kind of stuff. I don't know if I... We haven't really been doing too much of that. I still think um, control is probably the way to go here. Yeah, I think we're going to go for control because we have got a couple of issues. And anyway, let's continue this. Take over this... Uh, Yeah, this is where we potentially have a war starting. I don't really want that to happen right now. So we'll go for linear taxes. They grow up fast. Okay, cool. Misguided warrior. Oh, that was Monk. That's the guy we, we actually named. And we are so close to winning this war. Where are those troops? Oh, he actually has 800 now. Is that his troops? No, 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 it isn't. Interesting. We're definitely going to want to avoid that for now. I, we, I, was, I didn't really want to go on it two-on-one. -on -one. I definitely don't want to go on it one-on-one. -on -one, uh, because I'm not exactly confident in, in our leading abilities. So let's try for a, quick, a cheeky extra siege. And see if this finally tips us over the edge. Got another two children during this war, which is interesting. And there we go, we finally won that war. And we also got three more territories to boot, which is pretty cool. Uh, he's oh no, we didn't. We did not get three more territories. I think we got I think we got this territory. 
Don't know why I thought we had three. He has three left. Yeah, we did only get the one. But still, happy, 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 happy. Uh, joins the court. Good luck with that. Hmm. Who is this guy? Yeah, okay, we can, we can have him join the court. Why not? I think we need more people in our court, to be fair. Let's disband. And I guess that was our first campaign that I personally waged um, as the leader, which is cool. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the court to see who we've actually got. He's quite terrible when it comes to stuff, when it comes to being a potential knight, which isn't what I wanted. We do have no more guests, however, but I do, I would like more knights in general. And he does have two claims, and of course, Recruiting people with claims means that we can potentially get more land later down the line, so... So yeah, he's already joined the court anyway. That works out well. I think that was a good, a good option to have him kind of come in there. So we can lawfully imprison someone. Who, who can we lawfully imprison? Because he's a fornicator, that is why he is. Uh, that's interesting. She she's the fornicator. She's unlanded. She doesn't have any money. I'm not going to get anything from it, so I don't see the point in doing that just yet. Let's see where we are with more land that we can conquer. I do think that the early game is all about conquering that land, um, expanding as quickly as possible in one life, potentially even getting enough for a kingdom when you're starting small uh, in one life. The quicker you can do that, the better. There we go. We found another little one. Again, we outnumber them. They have no allies. We know that our troops sit in at um, 900. So this is a good little quick and easy victory for us again. Again, we're going to move our rally point. Pop it over here. Raise the troops. And I did just notice that we're not actually the commander again. So we're going to pop ourselves as the commander. It's probably not a good idea to always be the commander as well. If you are the commander, obviously, then you have a real chance of, of dying and, uh, and your game ending early. Or at least um, a high turnover of characters. And another thing we do also need to sort out relatively soon is the fact that our, we we have more domain than we're actually entitled to. Um, obviously, if we do become king, we'll be allowed more domain anyway. But yeah, currently we're sitting on seven over four, which is which isn't good. It isn't good. We do need to sort that out. However, we did just win that war incredibly quickly, which is pretty cool. There we go, so let's, let's disband that. We don't have enough for a kingdom yet. How many do we need to get for a kingdom? We have a duchy. I think we need to create another duchy. Uh, I think it's three duchies we need. So... 
yeah i think i think we're going to need a little bit more we've only got one duchy right now that we can create it will cost 125 gold we don't have that just yet but i think if that's what we work on next i think we need to conquer just a tiny little bit more um and we will have enough to create a third duchy and then pretty soon after that we should be able to create a kingdom uh, in this lifetime which is which is the goal absolutely is there anyone else weak right now relatively he does have an ally Okay, we can we can leave that for a second. So I think what we need to do is fast forward time, allow some money to stack up, and potentially look to give some land to someone else. So we do have a couple of sons. I believe this one is unlanded. So let's let's grant him a title. I think keeping stuff in the family is always a good option. There we go. He just become our our vassal which is good for us oh not allowing us to negotiate an alliance how interesting normally we get that straight away i have to keep an eye on that who else have we got so he's actually imprisoned which isn't cool ransom Right, simple 25. Let's allow the time to go. There we go. And we had another daughter. He's only 13, so I don't really want to give him anything just yet. We do need another spy master, however. So for spy masters, we could have we could have our wife be the spy master. That could work out really well. Seventeen is quite a high stat too. Our marshal is also unlanded. However, he also has no children, which could be problematic. How old is his wife? Forty-eight. Probably not gonna have children either. Another vassal right there. Who else have we got in a council? Whoosh. Okay, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give him a piece of land as well. Just so we can kind of bring down what we currently have. There we go. He's also quite happy with us, so that works out well. He can't have any land. And she's unlanded. We're definitely going to have to give one more piece of land to someone. I think it's probably going to be a son. Um, I think it's probably going to have to be a son. There we go. He was still in prison at the time, which is why we couldn't give one to him earlier. There we go, that works out well. And now we're down back down to four and four, which is good for us, meaning that you know people don't have necessarily a huge reason not to like us, which is which is important. How are these factions doing? I think one of them disbanded. Oh, hello, friend. That's very interesting. So this guy is actually going against us right now, uh, which we don't want, obviously. Ah, okay, he's just is he's just popped off. Okay, so we got no factions. That's cool. Okay, we're all good and golden then. Well, guys, with that being said, I think we're going to end this episode here because I think we've accomplished quite a lot. We currently have a very well put together um, kingdom. Uh, 
the courts all love us at the moment. We've got no factions. We've managed to extend our borders and our land uh, in this go. And yeah, pretty so, so far, I think we've done pretty good. And of course, ending the episode with no mistakes is definitely a good idea. Uh, we do very quickly have one more chance of getting something else. Reaver it can be useful. I don't think in this case it's going to be fodder. Again, very useful in our case. Not going to be useful. Um, so I think we're going to go for military engineer. Anything to do with siege weapons is always a golden. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's going to be useful to us even though we don't have siege mechanics. Yeah, it does. Look at that. Minus 30% um, on siege time. So yeah, it's a really good option to grab that. And yeah, so we're going to end it here, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And of course, comment your thoughts down below. If I haven't explained anything enough for you, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my very best to either explain it in the next video or maybe even help you out in the comments. But until next time, guys, I've been The Monk. We've been Acquitted Eculus. Until next time, happy gaming.